Well, chapter 11, uh, family violence and child abuse. This one's not very fun. It is my hope and prayer that you teach your whole career and never have to deal with this, but the odds are you will. And in our country, in our area, the m most common one is neglect. But Dr. Uh, Marie Rojas Cortez, uh, coming from Mexico, this was a big part of her life. And so she feels really strong. She put together a really strong chapter here. And if you teach in any kind of a low-income school, this will be uh, a concern uh, daily to you. But it will mostly be neglect. Some of these uh, abuse things are really extreme and uh, it'll be above your pay grade so let's uh let's uh, take a look here first i want to just look at how they she outlines it here and it's kind of long but we're going to move through it pretty quickly first defining uh the abuse and the different categories uh and then uh the res responsibility to report and this is where it comes into you that you'll have a responsibility and that'll be part of your project is explaining that and then how to communicate with the families about it and then different programs prevent it. And I don't know if you ever prevent it. You create some awareness. Uh, often this is at the family level and has nothing to do with you. You don't get to reach out there with a long handled toothbrush and clean up these families. You work with the child where they're at and how they're at when they come to you and try and move them forward with their learning so that they don't repeat this. And she does, uh, she goes into some areas that are really surprising to me. And then uh, some programs to recognize it. So let's, uh, let's uh, begin here. Here's the objectives. Uh, discuss the domestic violence and how it leads to abuse. Uh, and define abuse and identify the warning signs. And uh, you're gonna get a lot of clips this time. Describe and explain abuse categories. Describe procedures for child abuse reporting, and this is probably uh, the most important thing. And also, I can say right here, and I'll say it again, it's above your pay grade. You sense any kind of abuse in any of these categories, you immediately get other people involved, like start with the principal, the counselor, those, and ask for that support. This is uh, above your pay grade. Identify ways to communicate with parents about child abuse and neglect. And you may be part of that, but ultimately, I, I'm going to ask you to ask your school to reach out because I, I don't think it should be your responsibility. So let's talk about this domestic violence. Daily violent crimes are announced. Most involve women and children, and that's not a surprise to you. And that causes some major health problem. Victims of domestic violence are victims of abuse, or their children are victims of abuse. And there's five types. Um, and so let's uh, let's go here. Um, I don't know about this. Some of this is pretty extreme. Uh, I pray that this is never you. Triple murder side, boyfriend strangles girlfriend, wife runs husband down with the car. Uh, I dealt with a family that was the other way, that the husband ran over the wife. He tried. They got in a fight, and he tried to take off, and she tried to stop him, so she grabbed the handle in the car, and when he took off, she got pulled under and was killed. Um athletes rape young girls uh children found alone in an apartment you hear this hit usually makes the news uh this neglect type stuff here um so early warning signs i'm going to uh, clip this and i want this uh, not only um in your notes but on your website uh, as part of this chapter on abuse i'm gonna go like this Uh, I'm just going to call it that early warning signs and kind of name them that way. Okay, and this is not a surprise. Uh, of this, and again, this is away from you. You get to see the end of this, unless your position is different than a teacher. Uh, this is away from you, but I, it's worth putting on your website. And then I'm going to put this up uh, on this video, and what this is about is. Uh, talking about domestic violence and it's not very long 
And so I'm going to ask you, and we're going to make that number one here. to uh, respond to this about what they say and it's about four four minutes I think uh, this will be number two is your five types of abuse and I just want you to list them there uh, let me see where that was in here right here five types domestic uh, it lists them right there and we'll, we'll come back to them but I just want them on this page then this is the effect effects of this uh, of course, the National Network of End Domestic Violence, 30 to 60% of individuals who are violent toward their partner also abuse the children. And again, that's not a surprise to you. And that's what I have here, that 30 up are, are not are here. And then this, uh, this is really interesting too. Uh, medically fragile infants appear to be most at risk of abuse. So isn't that interesting? Um, and unfortunately, uh, families from these lower incomes that she'll talk about tend to have babies, uh, kids in general that are more at risk for health issues, uh, delays in learning and, st and such. Um, particular family that has a history of social problems, including domestic violence, mental illness, and abuse. And how do you know that? You don't. You get to see the end result of that. So studies have shown that children are a high risk of maltreatment when parents psychologically uh, abuse each other. And again, that, uh, th that's yucky, yucky stuff. But uh, hopefully it isn't in your, uh, your realm. Children are also disempowered and intimidated is imperative therefore to provide resources for them okay and then this is here uh, I'm going to uh, ask you to this will be um, yeah I clipped this but this this we went you know this is here and I'm not going to clip this I'm just going to ask you to address this so this will be number three and there's some questions on the test about this uh, what these are and so they're right here what each of those do. So what about defining this this child abuse? What is child abuse? Well, it's a physical or mental injury, sexual abuse, neglect, treatment, or maltreatment of a child under the age of 18. And generally, it doesn't get to that level because they disappear before that. And most commonly, it goes up to about age 14 or 16. By 18, uh, they, they get tired of it and they disappear away from the, the abuser. It's welfare under circumstances which indicate that the child's health or welfare is harmed or threatened. Four types of abuse include physical, sexual, emotional, and neglect. Uh, and that child maltreatment includes all types of abuse, including neglect. So what is the background of this? Uh, let me go here. Here they are. Um, and I say under under 19 or under 18, but uh, you're looking more. Uh, where this comes into play, those of you that are special ed, that are working with special ed kids, uh, this will come into play uh, at, at even later than this if they're, they're maltreated. Okay. So the background of this, uh, you read this, this is very interesting about this development. I, I can't remember if there's questions on the test, but very interesting story about this. Uh, talks about how the fathers thought the kids were their property and stuff, and this whole process, how we get there uh, to where we're at today. And then this national response. <clears throat> here and I, I want you to uh, do this. This will be uh, number four. Uh, I'm going to put these two together. So this is number four. And the national response here was the term battered uh, comes into play. And by next 1967, all 50 states had legislation to facilitate reporting, mandatory reporting of child abuse. And then down here, this national center. Uh, uh, and this acronym shows up in the test also, and it's just the reporting of this. 
It was recreated in 74 PL 93 Ford uh, 270, 247. Again, I ask you this on a different lecture. I'm going to ask you again, what does PL 93 247 stand for? What does PL stand for? And what does 93 247 stand for? So... What do those numbers stand for in this? And that's part of number four. And then this here, and this here, you're gonna see more of this, but that's heartbreaking. Uh, when it gets to this level, like I say this is grounds from uh, removing them from the home, um, those types of things. And you don't have to wonder about this. This will be very obvious. This will be extreme pain. Uh, and it gets to that. So uh, yours will be at a lower level. So why is there abuse? And that's here. And I just want you to write, uh, this is going to be number five. And it goes through here. It's inappropriate expectations, lack of empathy, belief in a physical punishment, uh, parent-child uh, role reversal, social isolation, difficulty experiencing pleasure, and intergenerational uh, ties. So this uh, here will be our number five. And you don't need a lot, just a line about each of those. Uh, why there is and it's I, I tell you of all the things she writes here it's not this simple to be able to isolate it down to why and then this uh interesting again dr uh, uh, rojas goes along on this about the global context of this um here it starts with this video here and i'm going to make this uh number six Number six here is you're going to watch this video about this global thing from UNICEF. And that is the global uh, organization um, that monitors this. And it goes through these. And I want you to uh, write something about these also. So this will be number seven uh, about this global context of it. Then who are these victims? This is uh, interesting also. I want to come over here. Who are the victims? Uh, strikes all ages, but the most common or youngest seems to be the most at risk. And that's, again, I don't have to tell you that. You know that just from uh, being around uh, schools and stuff. Uh, child help indicates that 5.8 million children are involved in three more uh, reports. Uh, and that was from 2011. And I say, yikes. Is estimated that child is a reported uh, abuse is reported every 10 seconds. Neglect is the most frequent type of abuse. And that's what will come down to your classroom as you determining what is neglect and what isn't. Some of these other more extreme things, uh, the, the kids will have these tags uh, before. You'll be aware. You'll look for bruises. You'll look for behaviors and those types of things. But this is the one that uh, even in some of our middle income uh, schools, you'll be wondering about. I say so. Number one is is neglect. Two is physical abuse, uh, and estimated this many deaths, seventeen hundred sixty deaths from this uh, reporting uh, agency here. Children with disabilities are at higher risk of being abused, not only in the United States but around the world. Overcome barriers to this. Uh, otherwise, it, it it affects them through adulthood. And again, you you know that. So why? Who are these abusers? Children see the violence, more likely they will become victims of violence and unfortunately also ultimately become perpetrators. And that, that's probably, of all of this we're looking at, it's probably the most sad part of it is they're uh, abused, uh, either neglect or, wh or whatever these kinds, and then they become tend to become per perpetrators. But this same office, uh, NCANS, uh, says 80% of abusers are the victim's parents. And so that's... Uh, that here, who are the most likely to be perpetrators? You put this in here, and this will be uh, number uh, eight, and you address this. Most be the parents. Harsh discipline seems to be the most prevalent abuse. Please put that in there also, because uh, here's why that's an issue to you. It may not seem harsh to the parent. This is kind of like. Um, Neglect is what you think is terribly unfair, harsh punishment uh, to the parents may be just a standard way to run the family. Uh, my kids uh, uh, would think it was abuse if 
uh, they don't get a new outfit uh, or something or a new pair of shoes or the right kind of basketball shoes. Uh, these kids may uh, be uh, get locked outside or something like that or have their bed taken away or something. Much more harsh that to you would be unthinkable. Uh, to them doesn't seem like it. Um, and it could be these other caregivers, and you want to bring this here. Most uh, defined in most states as others, like uh, relatives, foster parents, and babysitters, um, show state statistics type of perpetrators relationships are often the main perpetrators. If children see the live violence, more than likely they will become victims of violence, and unfortunately, ultimately become those perpetrators. And the thing that's not mentioned here is uh, people not related to the family, and uh, where uh, the probably the most common I saw was significant others. Uh, somebody moves into the house that's in a romantic relationship, uh, and uh, it has a less tolerance for the children, and so tends to uh, to do that. So that's for number eight. And then uh, they go into these child abuse categories. First of all is neglect. Um, and I'm going to uh, let you write about neglect here. And also this video here. And this is um, about neglect. It's called The Science of Neglect. And it's not very long. And then a little thing about educational and emotional neglect. Uh, they're right here. And we come back and visit those a little bit later. But uh, what is that definition of neglect? And it is that failure to provide the most basic necessities like this. And again, in your world, you can't imagine. Uh, but the problem with neglect, and she does not hit this very, very well, is you, uh, they may have a different, uh, a completely different definition of what is adequate shelter, what is adequate care and supervision, what is adequate food, what is adequate clothing, what's adequate protection. They may have a completely different thing. In my uh, world was dirty clothes, Dur you know, not bathe. So again, it doesn't rise to the level, these families, it didn't rise to the level of neglect in their world, but to me, it was unthinkable how how they dirty they came to school and stuff so uh you you get this here uh, on those and this is number nine where you talk about what neglect is you watch this video and you respond to those and that's number nine i want to look at this this is interesting uh perpetrators by relationship to the victim so parent uh, obviously it's the highest but then it goes through these different categories and the total uh, number of perpetrators uh, here here's what I was saying too that uh, doesn't get a lot of attention it, it's somebody else that joins the family later and what my experience was they're temporary they come and go they're not there permanently they come and be part of the family for an indefinite period of time and then they're gone so they have a less tolerance for uh, for the kids, whatever their issues are. Uh, South Dakota, is uh, a, a lot of doesn't have reporting here, and I'm not sure what our laws are, uh, but I know we have mandatory reporting, and uh, that percentage-wise, and I wish they would give you percentages here, but the, this is from, uh, say, from 2012, so it's old data, but that's how well it's kept. It all comes from, not from you, it comes from social services. And it's all public a record, not who, but how many. So you could put this together too, and apparently they got somebody to put that together here. Then this here by uh, neglect by families is reported. See, neglect is by far the biggest. In our country, child abuse neglect uh, here, by far the biggest. And then it goes through physical abuse, and uh, that uh, here... And I'm not going to make you do anything with that. Uh, the only thing you, uh, I'm going to have you look at is shaken baby syndrome. Uh, I think this is number 10. There's a, there's a question on the test or two about, about shaken baby, but the, some of these pictures will, will jar you. And again, if you notice, these are young children and often even preschool age. And so that's what comes. But the result of this, there's a question on the test about the result of shaken baby syndrome. But look at some of these, old Jari. And again, they're little kids. Now, here's the emotional abuse, uh, sexual abuse. And, uh, um, and I think I have those. Okay, here's emotional, terrorizing, continue to reject uh, the child, 
uh, refuses to uh, provide needed things. Um, again, you don't you don't need all that uh, right there. And then sexual abuse also, and I'm not going to make you go through all these. Uh, you, you don't need to, to know what each of those are. Again, you, you'll sense things and you will tell somebody uh, to help you keep an eye on it. But do this. Uh, kids that are involved with any of these categories, just love them. Um, and when I say that, you be a little careful because they're generally not used to being hugged or something. Our middle class kids are, are used to that. Uh, but we really had to crack down on this. Uh, now we are allowed to do high fives and stuff, and it's all in relation to this, uh, that these kids uh, from these uh, homes where there's abuse uh, are freaked out by hugs and stuff. So we used to be not too long ago that you saw teachers hug kids all the time, but now we do the phony high fives and stuff, and kids know that's a joke. Uh, but because of this, uh, uh, that's where that came from. Okay, so there's those categories. Uh, I, I've debated on this whether you need these signs. I don't know what to say. You'll know. I don't think we need to have all these. Um, preventing child abuse. Uh, maybe I'll clip this uh, and, and have you put this on your, on your um, website also just so that you have something like this and it's preventing child abuse and again I, I don't know the value of it but as long as we're swinging by here let's grab this you don't have to put it in your notes I want to see this so now you have that Um, what to do, remain calm, take the child to a private place. Uh, this is why I'm saying if, if you have to address this, uh, you certainly don't address this in front of the kids. This is where you, you get somebody else, uh, yeah, get down to eye level, but uh, this is where counseling or um, <coughs> you want to listen. And it depends on what the needs, but th those are some good things there. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm going to clip this, uh, and I'm just going to call it "How to Respond." And again, I'm going to ask you to put this on your website. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say this is uh, Chapter 11. I'm just going to call it uh, CA if I can, and we'll leave that at that. So you have something for your website that way. Let's move up here. Let's say, how about this responsibility? So here you go. Um, abuse and neglect. Uh, school personnel and child care staff members have more than a moral responsibility to report child abuse, okay? So you have more than that. Reporting abuse with any... Uh, with the early detection and even prevention abuse, laws in each state require them to report it. So we don't do a very good job of explaining that to you, but you have a fiducial, a, uh, by law, responsibility to report this. Now, obviously, some of the pictures we looked at, but I'm saying what it, where this will be uh, angst to you is kids that have been neglected that aren't clean or you don't think have been fed properly and here was another area that we she never mentions anywhere here about abuse that was a big thing in my world when i taught in a low-income school bedtime i worked with tons of kids in middle school that had no bedtime they went to bed whenever they wanted now why does that matter because then they couldn't function they would be up all night and guess what they do when they get home from school they'd sleep and then they would be up all night. And the other thing it does, it throws them off. So they, when they get woken out of a deep sleep because they haven't been sleeping, they're not hungry for breakfast. Then we go through this thing about, oh, they haven't been fed breakfast. Well, the reason is because they didn't go to bed, that they were up all night and they ate all night long. And then they're not hungry for breakfast, even if there is breakfast in the house. And then they come to your classroom and by 10 o'clock, they're starving. 
that blood sugar drops and they say to you, I didn't have any breakfast. And then you feel horrible. And so when you start backtracking this, and no parent, I'm one of these, no parent wants to be accused of not putting their kid to bed and not feeding them my breakfast. So when do you report that and when do you not? Good luck with that. Visit with other teachers about that. Four categories of professional mandated reporting are a medical, legal, and human service professionals and educators. That's who's mandated. And now in medical, of course, they ask horrible things. Uh, I can remember I had to take my uh, a younger son to get his physical for football. And the question is, uh, are you sexually active? Uh, do you use protection? Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Yes, that's because of this. Uh, is mandated by law. The last uh, uh, piece of legislation that came through about health care had that in it, that doctors now by law have to ask that. So in front of me, they asked my son if he was sexually active, if he had a boyfriend or girlfriend, and if he used protection if he had sex. Yeah, let that soak in a little bit. But this is the thing, what that part of it is, is reporting, is they have to report that as do you, okay? And educators, that's you. No states require proof of abuse before reporting, and the reports must report that if they are suspicious of maltreatment. Teachers, child professionals, and others who report in good faith are immune, okay, it's a big mouthful there, if you do it in good faith, they're immune from legal action. And let me caution you, you cannot unring a bell. Once you say, I think there's abuse, even if it's proven false, you have uh, impugned a family. Now, does that mean you don't do it? No. That's why I keep saying to you over and over, get others involved. So you get second and third opinions based on what you're seeing. And the hardest of that will be neglect. When does it rise to a point where it's a problem? It's a problem for you. It may not be a problem for the family. And so that's the one I had to learn the hard way is what, what level is it a problem and you have to step in with neglect. Okay. So let me see where we're at here. Who reports this? Um, that we just went over. Who is the mandatory reporters? Where are we at here? We're on number 11. So this is number 11. These here, I'm going to tell you what to do with these. These are number 11. Uh, uh, indicates abuse and neglect, the child at preschool age, the child of elementary. And I think what I'm going to do with these, and all it does, here, here it tells who's uh, responsible and who, is, who reported all these. And again, you don't need this. You just have to know who is responsible as mandatory reporters. Right here, they're here. Okay. Child abuse, and here's how they reported. That's all by year and who reported it. And, uh, of course, the highest amount is, and per personnel means, it doesn't say teachers. It says personnel, and that could be from teacher's aides to bus drivers to everybody. Most common, you kick it up to a principal or administrator or counselor or somebody. But this is uh, obviously by far the highest one in the professionals. Here's non-professionals where that has to be. And who reports maltreatment cases? Child uh, reported by both non-professional professionals must have this. So um, this is why I'm not sure what to do with all of this. Um, so... Uh, let's jump down here to this child of preschool age. Um, I think, let me show you this here. I think I'm going to uh, clip these also uh, uh, for your website and to do both here. So just give me a second here. I'm going to clip these. I'm going to shrink this a little bit so I can get this all in here. Uh, child of preschool uh, age reporting. And that's what I'm going to call it for you. And I want these on your website and I'm 
I'm going to say chapter 11, preschool. So insert these all in your, um, I'll just make these a little bigger again, and uh, here. And also this here, uh, indicators of ch children in uh, a potential need. I want you to have that also. And really, and I say this, I pray this never uh, reaches you that you're immune to this, but the reality is you won't be. need for protection and uh, again I say to you can you imagine in your family that somebody says oh I think your kids are being abused so this one is of elementary age Okay. And then secondary. I'm going to give you that also. And again, in your In each one of these, I, uh, so that you have some uh, baseline to go from if you've ever uh, come across this of, uh, you know, what, what the, some of these symptoms are and stuff. Uh, school system, uh, this is, uh, that was here. You're going to put one there and one there, one there. Uh, and then school system, uh, read about that. I don't know if I have that in here. Yeah. <coughs> So what about the school system? What is their responsibility? Um, better information reporting goes through that. Um, here, then let's go to internet safety. And again, this, I'm going to just say that you address each of these. This is number 12. What about internet safety? And again, just grab something out of here that helps you remember this. Bullying and violence in school. Uh, hit these. Uh, yeah, bring these in for bullying and violence, those questions. Uh, this is interesting, uh, very interesting to you. Awareness of abuse child to child. Um, and I, I would ask you to bring these six into that. Can teachers make a difference? Uh, here's the thing here is really interesting about can teachers make a difference? Uh, corporal punishment, and again, uh, that's above your pay grade, but it's interesting here. Get a copy of the school discipline because some, if they haven't been updated, uh, it's. I almost thought it was a joke at the beginning when I saw it, but uh, you would. Uh, 29 states and just had banned corporal punishment, so only 29, and it comes from way back when uh, began in the 60s and continued to the 21st century when it was acceptable. And it was called in local parente. Uh, I grew up in a home where my dad spanked us. And so that, to them, uh, I don't know what it had been like. Uh, I more than once uh, had teachers lay hands on me. I had one slap me silly one time. An old nun who, uh, God rest her soul, just passed away here in the last five or six years. But I had a, a very, very young social studies uh, teacher one time sneak up behind me and put me in what was called a Spock hold and took me clear to the floor and said some unflattering things. Um, so this is interesting too. Let's go on to this. Why does it happen? Uh, why don't you you address these here things? Um, family income, gender, family size. Uh, really interesting that uh, Ro Dr. Rojas would allow this in here because this is a big one. And children who come from families with incomes below the poverty level are seven times, think of that. Seven times. That's why I keep saying to you, a low-income school like I taught in. More likely to abuse than those at a higher income. Uh, very interesting. Part of it is it's generational. It's perpetrated from generation to generation. 
uh, gender has effect, family size, four or more likely neglected. And here's why four or more, because generally that tends to go with family income. And this four children doesn't have to be all uh, the same mom and dad. Does not distinguish here, but family size in a low-income home does not mean full brothers and sisters may not even be fully related. Then race again and ethnicity comes back to family income. She doesn't make that connection. Then the type community, uh, exposure to violence. And so uh, that's uh, number 13 here on this page. You're going to talk about this. The characteristics of these risk factors. Talk about that. And it gives you a bunch of stuff here. So I'm going to clip this also, the likelihood, who's likely. I'm going to call it uh, likelihood of abuse. And can you please put this both in your notes and uh, on your website? And these are very interesting. The parents show up for appointments. They have unrealistic high expectations. The expectation of the child inconsistent to the age. They become aggressive or abusive. They isolate themselves. Uh, really uh, interesting stuff there for, that Dr. Rojas comes up with. So that's under characteristics. Then this development of policies uh, here uh, address that, that the center, they have that, and this needs assessment and policy. Uh, look at those things and see, uh, and put something about those so you get those. Here's these different reporting sources. You have to do anything with that. And then this communication with families is very interesting. Abuse, uh, schools instruction, talking to a parent regarding observed behaviors may be linked to abuse, but very challenging. And that's why I say, please get somebody else and be careful what you say to the child. Be careful what you say to the child. Uh, <laughs> can I use this word? Don't be thinking out loud, especially when it comes to neglect, because they may be in their world, they're just fine. In your world, when they're dirty or smell bad or... Uh, inappropriate clothing was another abusive thing I saw with kids, uh, uh, young ladies that are dressed inappropriate for their age and uh, uh, young men that had inappropriate things uh, uh, they were promoting on their shirts and stuff. Uh, all a part of that. Okay, and how to talk to children. Uh, here's do's and don'ts. And I, I'm debating on what to do with this. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, clip these also for your website. Uh, and I'm going to just shrink this a little bit so I can do that and get, and get them all. So here is uh, the one when talking to the child, do's and don'ts. And again, um, I don't know if you need these. Let's not put these in your web. In your, let's put these on your web page. Chapter 11, don't talking to child. And if you ever live in this world where you have to address this, you're going to need every one of these. And then let's slide down here, the do's and don'ts of talking to parents. I'm going to just come back up a little bit here. And that'll be more scary for you. And you know some of you are going to go on and be administrators and then this falls more in your in your lap. Don't talking to parents. And someday you'll be thankful to have these resources. Okay. Then programs to 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 uh, this um, parent education caring programs. 
uh, support offered by this. Uh, I'm just going to give this to you also. Here's a checklist for uh, school. and I, Let me clip that. I'm kind of clip happy this one. And I'm going to ask you to put this on your website also. Chapter 11, School Checklist. Okay. Do they have a policy about reporting? Did the school needs us do a needs assessment? Do they have a center coordinator? And again, this is all doc, uh, uh, aimed at Dr. Rojas's world in Mexico of this being such a common thing. If you're in a low income school, and I keep saying that term, but in South Dakota we have a number of those. These will come into play also, and it may be you running these programs. Okay. And programs that uh, that recognize abuse. This is interesting. Also, uh, this was uh, number thirteen, number fourteen. Uh, how to talk to them. That was the clips, and then number fifteen, uh, these parent education. You're going to just give me something about those checklists. We just I just clipped that for you, and then this one on programs for school. Parents Anonymous and Community Help. Okay, and so you're going to uh, talk about that briefly. So 16 of them, sorry, this one isn't very fun, but it is your responsibility uh, to be involved in this, whether you like it or not. The only thing I can have said it 100 times in here is make sure you ask for help. Uh, okay from other teachers more certainly a counselor in your school but if you need to take any formal steps that you kick this up to a principal it's not you getting on the phone saying i think your kid is too dirty or hasn't eaten or i think your kid's been sexually abused or physically abused get somebody else the only time that happens is if you are the principal you are this point person you are the social worker uh, involved with these kids then you get to make that call and hopefully you get additional training but your biggest message out of this is you are a mandatory reporter. 